Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be continuing our discussion of sessions, and we're going to learn about how to properly destroy a session. We're going to briefly talk about what the destruction of a session actually implies, what it actually means. We're going to go over a uh, built-in function in PHP that's used to uh, basically destroy session data called session underscore destroy. And then we're going to talk about some additional steps that you need to um, do in addition to calling this session destroy method to effectively um, basically end or delete or destroy a session. Um, that's going to involve deleting, manually deleting all the session data, um, manually deleting session cookies. Uh, then we're just going to go over a review of all of the uh, steps that are involved uh, in successfully ending a session. And then we're going to uh, briefly talk about the topic of garbage collection, which talks about what happens if a session is not successfully ended, what happens to that session data. Uh, so basically, um, when either a client or a server determines that a session is over, for example, if a client wants to log out or a server decides that the user hasn't um, had any activity in a certain amount of time, it can end that session, and that's called uh, destroying, destroying the session. Basically, what destroying the session does is it um, undo, undoes the two things that a session does. Namely, it cuts the link between any previous and any future HTTP transactions, as that's part of what a session does, is it links multiple requests together so that they're considered part of the same session between two parties over a specific period of time. And it also um, gets rid of any of that session data associated with the um, particular session because that data is a is transient data and when the session ends it's no longer needed so destroying a session is, is effectively basically get reading that data so in PHP for example what that means is actually getting rid of that session data file um, in the temp directory uh, on the server freeing up those resource that disk space to be used for other sessions so PHP provides the session underscore destroy method um, that is used to destroy a session and basically what it does is it ensures that any session data stored on a server um, st stored on the server will be deleted. So all of those um, session uh, files that we had looked at um, in previous lessons uh, in the temp directory it was like sesh underscore and then the unique ID of or the unique session ID. Um, session destroy when, it, when it's called it basically deletes that uh, session file so that data is no longer accessible. Um, one thing to note about the session destroy method um, is that in order for you to call it, it actually has to have um, on it, in order to call it in a script, it actually already has to have uh, or know about an initialized session, which means that indirectly means that in order to call session destroy, you actually have to call session start on that script before you do it. And this is a little counterintuitive because you think, okay, I'm destroying the session, why do I need to start it? Um, but that's part of the process. So in any script where you call uh, session destroy, you need to, before you call that method, you also need to call um, session start. Uh, so let's take a look at um, what we've done, uh, what we've previously been doing to, or what session destroy actually does. Um, we have a script called set session var, um, and this is similar to what we used in our, our last uh, uh, lecture. Uh, basically what it does is it starts a session and it sets a username uh, session variable, sets it equal to John Smith, or J Smith, and then it outputs a link to get session var.php, which is a page that allows us to um, basically access that session variable. So because it accesses session variables, it needs access to the session super global. In order to get that, it has to call session start. So it's going to call session start, which is going to read that, um, see the cookie that the client provided with a, a session ID, um, and then it's going to use that to load the session uh, super global. Basically here we've uh, done a little bit of um, error checking to make sure that um, the session is started, uh, or that this username session variable does exist when the user comes to this page. So basically it's just checking if that username variable, session variable set, go ahead and set this username variable to the value of that session variable. And if not, uh, we're going to store it to a, uh, we're going to set it to a, a string that's um, an italicized uh, string non-existent, which means that it doesn't exist. Uh, then what we do in the body of our uh, HTML is we simply are outputting the name of that um, particular username that um, is part of the session, assuming that it exists. We also output a link that says, uh, that's a new link that says to destroy the session. It's going to go to destroy session.php 
what that does is it's going to call our session destroy method. Now, as mentioned, it also, uh, in order to call session destroy, you have to call session start um, previously. So it calls session start and then calls session destroy. And then the body um, will attempt to output um, this session uh, variable username um, if it is still valid. And it does, it has the same um, uh, ternary operation up here that basically tests for the uh, existence of that username variable and uh, will set username equal to that value if it has been set. And uh, the reason why I've included this here, it seem, it, you might wonder why am I including that um, in a statement that's destroying the session, and that's to show you uh, sort of the incomplete nature of what session destroy actually does. So, uh, for example, this is our temporary directory. I'm going to delete all of our current session data files that we have in there. If we go to, um, go ahead and make sure that any session cookies are deleted. And then if we go to example one, and we go to set session bar, we can see that um, we've been set a cookie, um, a session cookie that starts with R4GLA. If we go and look at our temporary directory that stores our session data files, we can see a, a, a data file that corresponds to R4GLA. Um, basically, we, the script is going to set that username variable. Again, if we look at it, a session variable is going to set it to JSmith. So when we click on next page, which is going to go to get session variable, we can see that we're able to output and access this uh, JSmith. Um, session variable that was set. Again, we can see here that we have our R4GLA cookie that was sent from the client to the server um, so that it knows that it's continuing this R4GLA session and therefore has access to that session variable that was set as part of that session. Now when we click on, and if we look here, we can still see that this session um, file exists. Now when we click on destroy session, we're going to notice a couple things. Um, First of all, we can see that the temporary file or the session data file no longer exists because session destroy does that. However, we can see that we're still able to output this JSmith session variable or the username session variable. If we go back and look at destroy session, um, we can see that even though we've called session destroy, we still have access to this um, session variable. And the reason for that is that when session destroy is called, uh, it doesn't destroy that session data file until after the script is finished running. So um, because of that, the information stored in that session data file, which has been loaded into session, is still available for the rest of this script. That's why we're able to access that down here. And that's one of the issues that we're going to talk about about destroying a session is that you want to manually destroy any session data that you already have so that this can't happen because um, in a way it doesn't make sense that you're destroying a session, but yet down here you're able to access that session information. One thing to note is if we actually go ahead and refresh that page, um, what's going to happen is, is when we, if we look back at here, when we start the session, um, it's still going to have that session cookie. It's going to try to load data for that um, particular session, but since that data file has been destroyed, <coughs> it's not going to be able to load it, and so this session username, um, the username session variable is not going to exist, and so we're going to um, not going to be able to output anything. So if we go ahead and refresh the page we can see that it shows non-existent. So it shows that it actually did delete that um, uh, data file, uh, but when that script is immediately run, those session variables are still available.